G'day folks and welcome to an All Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update today, the 17th of March 2015. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update is sponsored by our major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. And with the help of Campbell Scientific Australia today, we've ma managed to do some final checks on our weather station and ensure that it is working and reporting as normal and is now ready to go. Alrighty, no prizes for guessing. Tropical Cyclone Nathan is the topic of conversation today. A tropical cyclone watch has now been declared from the Bureau of Meteorology for the area between Cape Melville and, by the looks of it, on that track map around Cardwell. Now, obviously, the track forecast has the system tracking pretty well smack bang in between that entire region, right in the middle there, and expecting to hit as a Category 3 around Cape Tribulation. But there is an error margin, as we mentioned, and, and as we've been telling you now, there is an error margin as far south as Innisfail and almost as far north as Cape Melville. Uh, there's certainly a, a, an argument there to suggest that the system could move a little bit further either to the north or a little bit further to the south. Intensity levels are holding at a Category 3. There was talk that it might intensify into a 4, but it may run out of time to do so. So it should be an intensifying Category 3 on the way into the coast. The system continues to remain fairly slow moving and will do so for another 12 to 18, maybe even as far as 24 hours before it starts to track westwards at, a, at an accelerating rate. Interesting things to note from the details of the cyclone gusts to about 120 kilometres an hour. Uh, it's located at 14.9, 149.6, and its movement is south, and it has got a little bit of a move on compared to what it was doing. South at six kilometres per hour, so not much, not 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 a fast-moving system, but certainly no not stationary anymore, which is good to see. Of course, the most important thing to note out of this is that last paragraph. The system should remain relatively weak until Wednesday morning. That's tomorrow morning. It is then likely to begin to intensify in a much more favourable environment. And this strengthening should continue up until landfall along the North Queensland coast. So if we took, take a look at the expectation in terms of wind strengths and central pressures, the system as it approaches landfall should get down to around the 960 hectopascal level. That is just bordering on category 4, so it's just under a 4. So it's, uh, as I said, a high end 3, 85 knot winds to the, in the centre at about 155 kilometre an hour sustained winds. They are not wind gusts. Wind gusts can be up to 40% higher than the sustained winds. So you're looking at gusts probably up to about 200 to 220 kilometres per hour in that situation. We take a regional view at the cyclone itself and the area around it. We can see that the monsoon that was just going absolutely ballistic out here in the last couple of weeks has weakened. We can see some convective clusters here around the Solomons and obviously the South Pacific Convergence Zone. There might be a new low way out here towards uh, Tonga and Fiji, but it's not going to uh, move towards Australia in any way, shape or form. It's going to head southwards and then southeastwards. So really, folks, Nathan is out here on his own. He's managing to get just enough moisture in from the north, though, from that monsoon, but he's not in the best conditions to intensify just yet. Alrighty, let's take another look here, a bit of a closer look here at Nathan, and we can see here that obviously on the satellite he seems to have been tracking uh, in a southerly direction. Now, it can be deceiving because the system's core convection is probably a little bit south of the actual circulation centre, so it might look like he's moving south a lot faster than he is, uh, and that has been, a, has been the case certainly on radar to an untrained eye, it looks like he's been moving south at a great rate of knots, but in fact he probably hasn't. There were a few people panicking that it was moving south very quickly, and what we can see here on the satellite is, uh, sorry, on the radar, is that he has been moving south, but only very, very slowly. The actual circulation centre is located way out here, if a long way further north than the actual rain band suggests. <clears throat> the rain bands, excuse me, the rain bands ha are actually moving south at a great rate of knots, but the actual circulation centre itself is remaining up here and tracking in a south to southwest direction. On the enhanced infrared, we can see that the actual convective uh, cloud depth of this system is diminishing, and we can see that is a fairly solid weakening trend there on that. Uh, when we start to see these cloud tops warming, so the colder, colder cloud tops are shown by the grey colour, the warmer cloud tops are shown by a lack of colour. And so what we see here is as, this, as the afternoons progress, the system has progressively weakened a little bit. But 
we can still see a very solid circulation here uh, of the of the cloud around the actual center of the or the core of the system is uh, certainly a good curved banding coming through in this system so we can look at if we just pause there and have a look there's a lot of banding coming into the cyclone itself and there is reasonable outflow particularly here to the south we're getting a lot of outflow of that convective column Wind shear analysis, ooh baby, this is going to be interesting. So at the moment we've got enough shear to be tracking the all that re real heavy convection a little bit to the south of the circulation centre. So we've got about 15 knots of wind shear. Now, here's the thing, as the cyclone tracks to the south and then eventually to the west towards Queensland, it's going to go into an area of very, very low shear. And I do mean very low shear, we could be looking at shear that's under 10 knots. What does that mean? Well, it means that the thunderstorms around the centre of the cyclone can grow without the tops of them being chopped off by strong upper level winds. So that means the convection can grow right near the centre and what that means is the air that needs to rush in to take the place of the air moving upwards in the cyclone can occur right next to that centre. So it becomes a bit of a positive feedback loop. So we get stronger, taller thunderstorms. We get stronger winds into those thunderstorms at the base, which makes those thunderstorms stronger and taller again. And so what we have is that, that loop that continues and we then have an intensifying tropical cyclone. And that is exactly what is expected to happen. The system should intensify probably pretty rapidly once we get into the later parts of tomorrow. All right, the latest computer forecast models have tracked this thing a long way further to the north. The computer models now predict this uh, coastal crossing around about the Cooktown area, and they're fairly unanimous in their predictions. So we've got here the GFS forecast ensemble. That's 20 different computer models are predicting from the GFS, are predicting a fairly solidly a crossing of this system around Cooktown. If we take a look at three different computer models here, and all three of these different computer models, they're all part of the American model suit. So we're looking at the CMC, which is the yellow model, the GFS, which is the red model, and the NavGem, which is the purple model. And all of them are predicting a coastal crossing right over the top of Cooktown between 4am and 10am in the morning on Friday. Now the important thing to note on these computer models is that there is no further southward progression of this tropical cyclone in any of those models. So those three models have the system tracking directly west from where it is right now. Now that seems to be a little bit unlikely. The system is tracking fairly slowly to the south. It would need to stop in the next couple of hours and then track directly west for these models to verify. So. At this stage, while the Cooktown solution is where all the models are converging, and I'll show you the European very shortly, the European model has an exact similar take, or exact, exact similar, exactly the same take on this type of scenario where the system crosses right over the top of Cooktown. Pretty similar scenario from the UK Met model. The UK Met model has the system completely stopping, coming to a direct standstill in the next six to twelve hours or six to nine hours, and then tracking directly west from there and crossing just to the north of Cooktown. Alrighty, so now we're going to take a look at the European computer model here, and we're going to zoom in when we get close to landfall. But for now, let's take a look at the general area. We can see the system does not intensify really over the next 6 to 12 hours, but as of around about tomorrow morning, so the intensification trend has actually moved forward. Now we were expecting it to intensify tomorrow night, now we're expecting it to intensify tomorrow morning. That changes things in terms of the maximum potential intensity of the system. So while before it was maxed out and capped at a 3, we do see the potential here if it develops a little earlier than forecast for the max, for the max cap to be located at around category 4 level. So, if we continue to track this system now as we go into 10 a.m. tomorrow, you can see very tight core pushing slowly to the uh, south-southwest. Then around about 7, 4 to 10 p.m. tomorrow, we see the system start to adopt that westerly motion. And if you keep tracking the eye, then once it starts to get pushed to the west, it is just all the way west. So, folks, for the Bureau of Meteorology, uh, for that track map to come off, we need to see a southward motion before the system gets dragged westwards. Now we are seeing that on radar, we need to see that continue. The moment this thing stops moving south, it will move directly to the west. Uh, it, might take about, it might take a few hours of no motion at all, but once it starts moving west, it will move all the way west. 
And you can see here that the European also predicting a coastal crossing right around, well let me get that up for you, around or just to the north of Cooktown. There's Cooktown there on your map. Now obviously with the system moving just to the north of Cooktown, Cooktown would of course be in the area of maximum winds. So you can see here the track map from the Bureau. Once again, if we reiterate that, it does have it pushing southwest for another 12 to 24 hours before it makes that westerly shift. Now, as I mentioned to you, the computer models that we've looked at this morning, this afternoon, based on this morning's runs, had the system no longer moving west from, uh, sorry, no longer moving south and directly west from here. And that's why they put it up around Cooktown. So my thoughts to you folks is that we need to watch the radar and the satellite very closely for southerly movement over the next 24 hours. The further south it moves in the next 24 hours, the further south it's going to hit. So while we've seen all the computer models putting this thing up around Cooktown, we have the potential to see the crossing a little bit further to the south where the Bureau have it around Cape Trib, maybe even further south to Port Douglas, if the system continues tracking towards the south or southwest over the next 12 to 24 hours. As I mentioned to you now, if the system moves directly west from here, it's going to cross somewhere between Cooktown and Cape Flattery. The only other option here, the only other alternative being shown by a couple of computer models is a slight west-northwesterly shift as it hits the coast. Now that's all to do with the orientation of the ridge and for our subscribers I'll go into detail about what that means in tomorrow morning's update for subscribers only. But at least uh, at this stage from a general public perspective just be aware that some of the computer guidance is tipping a slight west-northwest shift in the track as it approaches the coast as opposed to a direct west track. Because there's a lot of disagreement between the computer models and the Bureau of Meteorology's track map, I don't want to go into too many details about when things start to get intense on the coast because a lot of it will depend on exactly where the system ends up going. Uh, and you can see here that obviously if you have a crossing a little bit further south to Cape Tribulation, which would be uh, here, uh, we would see a lot of these conditions move further to the south. But overall you can see that the system is probably about two to three hundred kilometers across in terms of the really destructive and damaging winds. Uh, we have gale force winds extending a lot further to the south than we do to the north and I'll just zoom out there so you can have a look at what the hell I'm talking about. So we can see the gales here starting with the orange. They're only about a couple of hundred kilometers away or in fact 150, 200 kilometers away to the north but to the south they extend about two to three hundred kilometers away from the center. So you can see while the core of the system is is expected to become a very tight, strong tropical cyclone. Uh, the actual gale force winds that would be associated with it would be extending a lot further south than they do north. That's all to do with the pressure gradient force uh, to the south. We've got a ridge to the south, and we don't really have a ridge in the north. Uh, we've got a monsoon trough, albeit a fairly inactive monsoon trough outside of the cyclone itself. So we don't really have a strong pressure gradient to the north outside of, the, the, of that created by the cyclone. So as the system approaches the Cooktown to Cairns coastline, it, we're looking at it being around about the high 950s or low 960s as per the Bureau of Meteorology's track map. Now that part, the computer models and the Bureau both agree on that part where the system is expected to be a, uh, a fairly strong Category 3 or weak, categ weak, I won't say weak, but a low end Category 4. A similar issue with uh, terms of rainfall that we do and that we have the same sort of issue with rainfall that we do with wind. Uh, we really can't tell you where the heaviest rain's going to be. Obviously the heaviest rain's going to lie near the centre of the circulation. You can tell that. That's really, really obvious and I don't really want to state that, but sometimes I have to. Uh, we're going to have the heaviest rain located right near the core of the system. So obviously if the core moves further south, that core area of rainfall will move further south with it. To the north of the system, we're not expecting to see uh, too much in the way of rainfall. Most of that really heavy stuff is going to be located right around the core. But to the south, we're going to see moderate to heavy falls of rain extending, assuming, of course, once again, let me stress this, assuming, of course, the system hits Cooktown or the area around Cooktown instead of the area that the bomb is saying, uh, then we would see fairly moderate to heavy falls of rain all the way down to around about Innisfail, maybe as far south as Tully even. Now, if the system hits where the Bureau are saying it's going to hit somewhere around Cape Trib, uh, then we would see that area of moderate to heavy rainfall extending south to about Ingham. So a lot will hinge on where the system hits, and that's why I don't really want to go into any more detail than I have done so far about 
who's going to cop what right now because uh, obviously you've seen the, the computer models they slightly disagree with the track from the bureau uh, and you've seen the bureau of meteorology's error margin there in the track encompasses the model possibilities so I don't think it'll come as any surprise to anyone that we've now finished the pre-planning phase and we are about to go into the planning phase of our chase and at some stage tomorrow we expect to be going into the chase phase. There is very little doubt that this will hit the coast. There is very little doubt that this will hit the coast as a severe tropical cyclone and so because of that, uh, because of those two reasons, uh, we will be attempting to get in and document the system. Uh, obviously the area that it might cross in could be quite difficult to get to. We have uh, an area there in Cape Tribulation, we've got an area at Wonga Beach to the south, and we've got an area up in Cooktown. So uh, all those three areas, and there's not too much in between them. So it is a, a difficult proposition to chase this one because of where it's where it's hitting. But I guess that's part of us, the Australian mainland. You know, you can't, p you can't pick and choose where they're going to hit. And we certainly aren't a very highly inhabited continent. And so we might have to get to a stage where near enough is good enough for this system. Thanks for watching this update, folks. We'll have another one for subscribers in the morning and for the general public tomorrow night. To become a subscriber, help us out and uh, get access to some live web streaming and more in-depth video updates, please join us at auscyclonechasers.com.au slash subscribe.